Hi everybody, this is Arif. Today we will focus on first order differential equations given in this form. So x is a function of t and x dot refers to the first derivative right, of x with respect to t. And this is given as, as a function of x. So we'll be looking at uh, differential equations given in this form. And of course we will have a, an initial condition and in the type of problems we'll be dealing with, we will be asked to find this limit. Here we have a typical example. So dx over dt is given as sine x and x0 is equal to pi over 2 and they ask us this limit. Okay? So the very first thing we can do here is just integrate it, right? If we can find x as a function of t, then we will just take this limit, right? Let's do that first and see what we will get. So dx over dt is equal to sine x, so I can simply write dx over sine x is equal to dt, right? So at this point, I can just integrate both sides. So then t is equal to 0, x is equal to pi over 2. So pi over 2 is here. And we can use dummy variables, so x prime, t prime. And t prime is t, this would be x. Okay, so if you do not remember, this is nothing but uh, cosecant x, right? So if you do not remember uh, what the integral of cosecant is, let's do it really fast. So you multiply with sine x prime and divide by sine x prime. So you'll have sine x prime dx prime over sine square x prime, but it can be written as 1 minus cosine square x prime, right? And this is nothing but the integral from pi over 2 to x, right? The right hand side is simple, it is just t, right? Just gives you t. So I now focus on this integral only. At this point we can make u substitution. So cosine x prime is equal to u. So if this is the case, minus sine x prime dx prime would be equal to du, right? So this integral becomes so integral sine x prime dx prime is simply minus du over 1 minus u square, right? So the limits would be, so when x prime is equal to pi over 2, this is simply 0 and this is going to be cosine of x, right? So let's continue here. So minus 1 over 1 minus mu square, right? So we can simply take this minus on the other side. So in the end, we, what we will have is the integral from 0 to cosine x du over 1 minus u times 1 plus u, right? So 1 minus u square is equal to 1 minus u times 1 plus u. So this is simply equal to minus t. So I put this minus on the other side. So we can use partial fraction decomposition and we can actually show that this integral is equal to du over 1 minus u and we have a 1 half factor here integral plus 1 half integral du 1 plus u. They all equal to minus t. So at this point I hope you all know how to do it partial fraction decomposition. So I can put 2 on the other side. So this is minus 2t, right? So integral of this simply gives us ln, right? So this is 1 plus u. And since we have a minus here, this becomes 1 minus u. And of course we have absolute value signs here. And the limits are simply from 0 to cosine of x, right? So when I put 0 here, this becomes ln1. ln1 is 0, so the lower limit is simply uh, 0. For the upper limit, I will simply replace this u's with cosine x, right? So this is 1 plus cosine x over 1 minus cosine of x is equal to minus 2t. Okay, this is good. Since cosine x is in between 1 and minus 1, we can simply get rid of these absolute value signs and we can uh, simply get is 1 plus cosine of x is equal to 
e to the minus 2t times 1 minus cosine of x. If I collect cosine x on one side, this would be 1 plus e to the minus 2t is equal to, we have e to the minus 2t here and minus 1. So cosine of x is simply equal to e to the minus 2t minus 1 divided by 1 plus e to the minus 2t. So this is how we can find cosine of x in terms of t. So as you all see here, when limit x goes to, sorry, when t goes to infinity, x of cosine x is simply gives us minus 1. Okay, so x could be right pi, right, or 3 pi, or it could be 5 pi. But here the question is, can x take like multiple values like that? Okay, we need to be really, really careful. We need to go back to our calculation and observe, some, observe something here. The fundamental theorem of calculus says that if I integrate a function, let's say g of x dx, in this open interval between a and b, this is simply equal to the antiderivative of g calculated at b minus the antiderivative of g, this little g calculated at a, right? So this holds true as long as this function here, g of x, is continuous in this open interval, like a and b. But when we look at this function here, 1 over sine x, it is not continuous at pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi, right? So what we can conclude here is that this upper limit here can be at most pi, okay? So that between pi over 2 and pi in that open interval, 1 over sine x would be continuous and we can actually use the fundamental theorem of calculus which we used here to find uh, the integral, right? So this actually helps us conclude that x cannot be actually 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi. We can simply conclude that the limit when t goes to infinity, x of t is simply equal to pi. And this is our answer. So the other options are not actually possible. Now we will look at this problem in a little bit uh, different way. So let's assume x is our coordinate and there is some sort of a fluid moving on this x axis and t is nothing but the time here so x dot gives us some sort of a, a velocity vector at any location x here. So in other words we actually define here a, a vector field so this is called a vector field in one dimension so x dot is our vector field and it's given in terms of the position and at any given point x, if we know x dot, we know that how this fluid actually moves. So if x dot is positive, the fluid is moving in the positive x direction. If x dot is negative, the fluid is moving in the negative direction, right? Some sort of a flow, right, in one dimension. Then it would be really instructive to plot x dot versus x graph. And this is what we will do now. So what is x dot versus x graph? So x dot versus x, okay? So this is simply a sine function here, right? In this problem, x dot is equal to sine x. So x dot is simply given as that, right? It goes on like this, maybe going on like that, so far and so forth. So this point is zero, and this point is of course pi, this is 2 pi, and it goes on like that. And this is minus pi. Okay. So x dot is sine x here. It's nothing but the plot of sine x versus x. Okay, so if I pick a point somewhere here, between 0 and pi, let's say, I see that x dot value is positive, right? So if there was a fluid on the x-axis, it should be moving in the positive x direction, right? So that's why we actually show an arrow to the right, right? This is the direction of the flow, right? So when we are here between pi and 2 pi, 
x that is negative, right? So the floor must be pointing to the left. Okay, they are pointing, all these arrows are pointing one location here, which is equal to, which is, which is x is equal to pi, right? Okay, what does this point tell me? Well, when x is equal to pi, sine pi is equal to zero, right? So x that would be zero. So there will be no motion. So this point is called a fixed point. Well, one may ask, how about zero, right? So when x is equal to zero, this is also zero. It should be also a fixed point, right? Okay, that's true. But what is the difference between zero and pi here? Okay, we need to observe something here. So when I start my motion between minus pi and zero, you see x dot is negative. So my flow is now to the left here. So as you see, now for x is equal to zero, the arrows to the right and to the left, they're all pointing away from that fixed point, right? So this is also a fixed point, but it is unstable. So if I move a little bit to the right of x is equal to zero, I would keep moving to the right. If I move a little bit to the left of x is equal to zero, I would keep moving to the left. So I will go away from x is equal to zero. So this is also a fixed point, but this is unstable unstable fixed point. And for x is equal to 2 pi, you can also check that this would be an unstable fixed point. If we go back to our problem, well, our starting point is x is equal to pi over 2. So I start my motion somewhere here, right? So x is equal to pi over 2 is here. So x that is going to be positive and I'll start moving to the right, in this direction, right? So x that is all positive here, but it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, smaller, smaller. It gets really close to zero when I approach x is equal to pi, right? So that's why in this limit, if I wait long enough, t is my time now, right? If I wait long enough in the limit, my x value will approach pi, okay? And this is a graphical way of solving these type of problems. And this is called phase portrait. Sometimes these phase portraits are also called phase diagrams. Okay? It's nothing but the plots of x dot versus x. Okay? So oftentimes these phase portraits or phase diagrams actually help us solve these type of problems without actually doing like tedious calculations. And it also gives us a, a better visual understanding of what's going on here. On our channel, we actually solved a much, much more complicated problem using phase diagrams or phase portraits. I'll actually put the link uh, down in the descriptions. I strongly suggest that you go ahead and watch that video as well. We looked at a one-dimensional kinematics problem where the system was actually oscillating. So the phase diagram was a little bit different. I hope you will go ahead and watch that video as well. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed solving these type of problems using x dot versus x plots. See you in the next videos. Bye.